Hello friends, my name is Tushar and today I'm going to talk about how to find strongly connected component using Khosa Raj's algorithm. So what is strongly connected component? So here I have a directed graph and a strongly connected component in a directed graph is a component such that all the vertices in that component is reachable from every other vertex in that component. So here I have four different strongly connected components. One of them is A, B, C. So A is reachable both from B and C and C is reachable both from A and B and B is reachable both from A and C. Similarly, D, E, F is a strongly connected component. G, H, I, J is a strongly connected component and then K is a strongly connected component. So what are possible applications of strongly connected connected component? One of them could be in Facebook, for example, uh, Facebook is graphs of people and then Facebook could be using this algorithm to find all the strongly connected people with each other and then could be looking for common interest or something like that in that component. So how do we find strongly connected component? There are a couple of algorithms to find it. One of them is Khosa Raju's algorithm which we are going to discuss today. It's a two pass algorithm. Basically it goes through this graph two times. So in the next section let's see how this algorithm works, why it works and then we'll, in the end we'll look at the code. As I said, it's a two pass algorithm. So let's see what we do in the first pass. So we do a DFS on this graph and then we order the vertices of this graph by finish time in decreasing order. So we will need two data structure, a set to keep track of all the vertices we have visited and a stack to order the vertices by finish time. So we can start from any vertex. Let's say we start from B. So we first thing we do is we put B in visited. Then we explore the children's of B. So B, let's say we go to C. So C is not in visited, so we go to C, put C in visited. Then explore the ch children's of C. So there's only one child A. And A is not in visited, so we put A in visited. And then explore children's of A and that's B. But B is already in visited, so we don't go to B. So at this point, we have we are done visiting all the children's of A. So which means that uh, there is uh, A is done, uh, A is finished. So A is the first first vertex to finish. So let's put that in stack. Then we go back in recursion and go to C. And C has no other children. So C is done, so we are totally done visiting C. So we'll push, we'll push C into the stack. Then we come to B. And then uh, B uh, has another child D, so we go in the direction of D, and D is not in visited, so we'll put D in visited. Then D has uh, another child E, and E is not in visited, so we'll put E in visited. And then E has another child F, and F is not in visited, so we'll put uh, F in visited. And then F has child D, but D is already in visited, so we'll go back to F. F has no more children to be explored, so we'll put F into this tag. And then we'll go back to E, and then E has no more children to be explored, so we'll put E into this tag. And then we go back to D. And then D has uh, no more children to be explored. So we put D into the stack. And from D we go back to B. So at this point B has explored all its children. So we'll put B into the stack. Then, uh, then we'll pick another vertex which has not been visited. So let's say we picked I. So I is not visited. So first thing we do is we put I in visited. Then we explore children's of I. So there is only one child of I that's J and J is not visited. So we'll put J in visited. And then we'll explore children's of J. So let's say we hit K and K is not visited. So we'll put K in visited. And then K has no more children. So K is done. So we'll put K into stack. And then we'll go back to J and J has another child G. So we go to G, put G in visited. And then G has another child F, but F is already visited, so we'll do nothing. At this point, G has another child H, so we'll go in the direction of H, put H into st stack, and then H has a child I, 
but I is already visited, so we'll not go there. So at this point, H is done visiting all its children. So we'll put H, H into stack. Then we'll go back to G. G has done visiting all its children. So we'll put G into stack. And then we'll go back to J. And J is done visiting all its children. So we'll put J into stack. And then finally, we'll put I into the stack. So this is the first pass of this algorithm and I have this stack in which the vertexes are ordered by finish time in decreasing order. Basically the vertex which finished last, for example I, is at the top of the stack and the vertex which finished first, for example, was, in this example was A, so which is at the bottom of the stack. So next let's see how we do the second pass. So first thing I did was I reversed my graph. Then, in the second pass, I'm going to pop elements out of the stack and do a DFS on this reversed graph. So, let's pop out i. And since i is not visited, I put i in visited. And this is my first strongly connected component, starting with i. So from i, I go to h. So, h is not in the visited, so we'll put h in visited and then also add H as a part of this uh, strongly connected component. And from H, we go to G, and G is not in visited, so we'll put it in visited and as a, add it as a part of strongly connected component. And from G, I go to J, J is not in visited, so I'll add it there and add it here. And from J, we go to I, but I is already in visited, so J has no more children to be explored, G has no more children to be explored, I has no, H has no more children to be explored and then I has no more children to be explored. So basically we are done exploring all the nodes from vertices from I. So basically this is our first component. So at this point we are going to go back into stack and pop out the next element. But this, uh, this strongly co uh, connected component, the first strongly connected component is done. So then I pop out J. But J is already part of visited so I do nothing. Then I pop out G. G is already part of visited, so I do nothing. Then I pop out H. H is already part of visited, so I do nothing. Then I pop out K. K is not in visited, so I add K here. Then I start a DFS from K. So this is start of our second component, strongly connected component. From K, we can go to J, but J is already in a visited. So we come back to K, and then K has no other uh, child to be explored in this graph. So this, this second strongly connected component is just one vertex. So at this point, we go again to the stack and pop out next element. So that's B. So B is not in visited, so I'm going to add it in the visited. And this is going to start my third component. So from B, I can go to A. So A is not in visited, so I add it here, and then I add it here. And then from A, I go to C. C is not in visited, so I add it here, and then I add it here. And from C, I can go back to B, but B is already in visited, so I go back to A. A has no other children, and then B has no other children. So at this point, we are done exploring all the vertices, vertices of this strongly connected component. So then we are going to start the next component. So we pop out D. D is not in the visited, so we add it here. And we start a new component here, D. And D has a, a, a children F. And F is not visited, so we add F here and add F here. And then F has a child E, and E is not in visited, so we add E here and then we add E here and then E has a child D but D is already in visited so we go back to E and E has no other child and F has no other child and D has no other child so this is the fourth component and D has, D has another child B but B is already visited so we will not go there so this is it so D so this is D F E is our fourth strongly connected component then I'm going to pop out E but E is already visited, then I'm going to pop out F, and F is already visited, 
and then I'm going to pop out C and C is already visited and then I'm going to pop out A and A is already visited. So these are our four strongly connected components I, H, G, J, K, B, A, C and then D, F, E. So let's analyze the time complexity and space complexity. So the time complexity is we did a, in the first pass we did a DFS so that will take O of E plus V time where E is number of edges and V is total number of vertices and then we reverse this graph and that will take another E plus V time probably depending on how the graph uh, how you have uh, representing your graph and then we, another, we did another pass on this uh, on this graph in the reverse graph and that will take another E plus V time so the total time complexity will be O of E plus V. Space complexity is pretty simple. The, the total number of elements in the stack is total number of vertices and in the visited set is also total number of vertices. So the space complexity is O of V. So in the next section, let's try to understand why this algorithm works. CLRS book has a mathematical proof on why this algorithm works, but let's see some intuition behind it. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to combine my vertices of a strongly connected component into one vertex and create a new graph. So this ABC is one vertex. And then DEF is one vertex. And then GHIJ is one vertex. And then K is one vertex. Then there's an edge from this side of this strongly connected component to here, so we'll create this edge. There's an edge from here to here, so we'll create this and then this. So what I'm saying is this graph is guaranteed to be directed acyclic graph. Why? Because if there was a cycle here, for example, if there was this edge from here to here, it means, for example, there was an edge from here to here, then this combined together would be one uh, uh, strongly connected component. So we won't have, we, we would not have these edges as two different edge. Uh, we won't have this as two different vertices, but we would have this one combined vertex. The fact that we are having these two different vertices, it means that there is no cycle and it means that this edge is not possible. So that shows why this is going to be a directed acyclic graph. Now, we did the ordering of vertices based off their finish time. What that meant was that when all the children of, uh, well, of a vertex are explored, then we put it in a stack. So there is a guarantee that at least one vertex from this set is going to finish after this guy. Because there is an edge from here to here, there's a guarantee that there will be at least one vertex here which will finish after all these guys are explored. So let's say that guy was B. So in the, in the stack, A and C went down, then all this DEF goes on top of that, but at least one vertex from this set, and let's say that B, will always be on top of this guy because there is a, uh, there is a edge from this side to this side. Similarly, there's a guarantee that one vertex from here will finish after all these guys are explored. Let's say that guy was G. So, and then there's also a guarantee that at least one vertex from here will finish after K. And let's say that guy was G. So then what we did was we reversed this uh, graph. So when we reverse this graph, this will pretty much end up looking something like this. So by reversing, this doesn't change because all the vertexes are vertices are reachable from each other. They are continuing to be they will continue to be reachable from each other because it's strongly connected component. Similarly for these other strongly connected component. But this vertex, this edge will have a different direction now because we reverse this direction. So then what we did was we did a DFS based on the finish time. So what we what guarantee we had was that B and G will be picked before this any of the vertex here or any of this vertex here is picked. So when B got picked first, 
we explored everything here. So A B C got explored, and then B and then we uh, finished, and we could not explore anything here because this uh, this uh, there is an edge from this side to this side. And then when G got selected next, G explored everything here. So G H I J. And then by the time K got selected or any of the edges, uh, any of the vertices in this uh, group got selected, these two guys, all the vertices in this were guaranteed to be explored. Which is why when DEF got selected, DEF could not explore, explore any further because all these guys were already explored by either B or G. And similarly when K got selected, K could not explore further because these guys were guaranteed to be explored before K got selected. So that is how we ended up having four different uh, strongly connected components. Hopefully this gives you some intuition why this algorithm works. Anyways, the, um, as I said, CLRS book has the full explanation of the uh, proof. So in the next section, let's quickly look at the code for this algorithm. To find strongly connected components. So my main function is this, you see, it takes a graph and then it returns a list, which is a list of set where each set represents a strongly connected component consisting of vertices. So first I initialize a stack and then I initialize a set. So what I'm going to do is in the first pass is go through all the vertices, do a DFS, and order the vertices by the finish time in decreasing order. So let's say we start from vertex 2. So visited doesn't uh, contain 2, so we go into this DFS util with 2 as a vertex. So DFS util is a very simple function. All it does is it does a DFS and puts the uh, vertex in a stack when it's done exploring all its neighbors. So we go, we start with 2. Uh, we add 2 to visit it, then we explore neighbors of 2, so we get 3, 3 is uh, not in visited, so we call DFS util with 3, add 3 to visit it, and then explore neighbor of 3, so let's say we get 1, 1 is not in visited, so we go into DFS util with 1, so we add 1 to uh, uh, visit it, and then explore neighbors of 1, so we get 2, 2 is in visited, so we continue, and then there is no more neighbors of one to be explored, so we add one to the stack. Then we go back in recursion, go back to three, explore another neighbor of three, that's five. Five is not in visited, so we add five to visit it. Then explore neighbor of uh, five, which is uh, six. So six is not in visited, so we add six to visit it. And then explore neighbor of six, which is uh, four. Four is not in visited, so we add four to visit it. And then explore neighbor of four, uh, for uh, this neighbor is 5 which is in visited so we continue uh, so we are done exploring all the neighbors of 4 so at this time we add 4 to the stack and we roll back in recursion where 6 was the vertex and 6 has no more uh, neighbors to be explored so we add 6 to the stack and then we roll back in recursion and then add 5 to the stack and then come back to 3 and 3 has no more neighbors to be explored, so we add 3 to stack. And then come back to 2, and 2 has no more neighbors to be explored, so we add 2 to the stack. Then we go back to the top, our main function, and then we explore another uh, vertex which has not yet been added to the visited. So that vertex is 7, so we again call DFS util with 7. and add 7 to visit it, then explore neighbors of 7, uh, that's 6, 6 already is in visited, so we don't add, go into recursion with 6, and then at this point 7 doesn't have any more neighbors to be explored, so we add 7 to the stack. And then we go back to the top of, uh, to the main function. So at this point we have populated the stack and uh, with the uh, with the vertices in a finished time in decreasing order. So next, let's reverse the graph and do the second it pass. Was, I reversed this graph and then I'm going to do a DFS on this graph based off the vertices coming out of this tag. So uh, we cleared our visited set and then 
I create my result uh, list where I'm going to store all the strongly connected components. So while stack is not empty, I pull out the first L uh, first vertex from the stack. So seven comes out of the stack, and then we do a DFS on seven. So visited doesn't contain seven. So we create a new set for storing this strongly connected component and go into this recursion DFS util for reverse graph. So in DFS util for reverse graph, first thing I do is I add seven to visited. Then I add seven to a set. And then I explore neighbors of seven. Seven doesn't have any neighbor in this reverse graph. So we do nothing and we go back to our main function. And then in here we add this set to our result list. So this is the first uh, set in my list. Then I go back here while stack is still not empty. So I pop the next element of the stack and that's two. And visited doesn't contain two. So we create a new set and then again call this DFS util for reverse graph. And in here, first thing I do is I add two to visited and then I add two into this new set. And then I explore uh, neighbors of two. So uh, first neighbor I get is one. So uh, one is not in visited. So we call DFS util for reverse graph for one. So first thing we do is we add one to visited and then add one to the same set as we added two and then explore neighbors of one. So that's three. Three is again not in visited. So we again call this DFS util for reverse graph. Add three to visited and add three to this set. And then three has a neighbor two, which is already visited. So we roll back in recursion, go back to one. One doesn't have any more neighbors. So we go back to two and then two has uh, no more neighbors. So we'll go back to the top of this main function. In here, we add this uh, two, one, three set to our result. And then we pop out the next element from the stack. So that's three. 3 is already visited, so we do nothing about 3. Then we pop out the next element from the stack, and that's 5. So 5 is not in visited. So we create a new set, and then we again go into the recursion with 5. So we come here, we add 5 to visited. Then we add 5 to uh, this set, and then explore neighbors of 5. So the first neighbor of 5 is 3 but three is already visited, so we do nothing about it. So then the next neighbor of five is four. So four is not visited, so we go into the recursion for four. So we add four to visited and add four here. And then four has a neighbor uh, six, so, and six is not visited, so we put six in visited and add six here. And then six has neighbor five, which is already visited, so we do nothing. And then six says another neighbor seven, which is also visited, so we do nothing. And then we are done exploring all neighbors of six, so we go back to four, and then we are done exploring all neighbors of four, so we go back to five. And then we are done exploring all neighbors of five, so we go back to the top of this, uh, this main function. In here, we add this set to the uh, result. And then, uh, we explore uh, we explore the next uh, next element from the stack so that's six six is already visited so we do nothing and then we uh, pull the next element from the stack that's four it's already visited and then one is also already visited so this is our uh, this is our strongly connected component seven two one three and five four six again the runtime complexity is o of e uh, o of uh, e plus v and the space complexity is O of V. Uh, so that's all I have to talk about strongly connected component. Please like this video, share this video, comment on this video, check out my Facebook page, check out my GitHub link. And uh, the, link, uh, the link to this uh, code is in the description section of the video. Thanks again for watching this video.